Hi, it's Mr. Anderson and this is AP Physics Essentials video 81. It's on potential energy. Let's say I take this crate right here and I add a cable to it and I raise it up. Does that crate now have potential energy? It does, assuming it's sitting on the earth, because if I cut that cable, it's going to fall down to earth. And so I've added energy to the crate by lifting it up. I've done work on that crate. But let's say I do this. Let's say I take the crate and I slide it across the floor. Does it have potential energy now? Have I added potential energy to it? No, it's not going to move back to where it was. And so just adding a force over a given distance, doing work on an object, doesn't ensure that there's going to be potential energy stored in that object. It has to be conservative forces. And we'll talk about what a conservative force is in this video. And so if a system has internal structure, there can be potential energy due to the interactions between the objects inside that system. And so your basic definition for what is potential energy, it's energy due to position, position of the objects within the system. Now this only works if those interactions between objects are conservative forces. And the three conservative forces that we'll talk about in AP Physics are going to be objects found in a gravitational field, mass spring oscillators, and then also if we have a charge found within a circuit. Then that energy is going to be a conservative force and we can store potential energy in that object. And so potential energy, if you think about it, is energy due to position. But it has to be position where we can get that energy back out again. And so as this archer pulls back on the arrow, this is a system. What are some of the objects? We've got the string, we've got the bow, we've got his hand. And so what we're doing is as we're pulling on that bow, we're applying a conservative force and when we let it go we're going to get some of that energy back. Let's say we take an object like this. Does it have potential energy due to its position? Well, not if it's in space, but if it's on the Earth, then the Earth is another object which is applying a gravitational field to it and if we let it go we're going to release some of that energy. And so remember this only works if you're using conservative forces. And so a conservative force is a force where the work that we're putting into the object is independent of the path by which that object takes. And so what does that mean? It means we're going to have the same amount of energy in the object if we move along the pathway of the green or if we move along the pathway of the blue. And so let's start with gravity, which we know is a conservative force. So if I lift this object from here to here, we're storing gravitational potential energy in it. But I could have lifted the ball like this, all the way around like this, and it's still going to have the same amount of energy stored inside it. It's conserved, and so we know that there's gravitational potential energy. Now let me take that same diagram and say we're looking at it from above. And now we've got this uh, red ball, and we're going to move it across some carpet. So we're looking at it from above. And so when I apply force to it to move it from here to here, I'm going to do less work than if I move it all the way around like this. And so we call friction a non-conservative force. And that's why we're not going to get that energy back out of the system. And let's go through these three examples of conservative forces and how you figure out the potential energy in each. And so our equation for gravitational potential energy is mg times the change in y, so where we are in that gravitational field. And so if I take that object and lift it up to 2 meters, how much gravitational potential energy does it have? Well, I'm going to use these three things. First, I've got the mass, plugging that in. We know the gravitational field strength is negative 9.8 meters per second. How far did I lift it? 2 meters. And so what is the work done on the system? It's negative 39 joules solving for significant digits. And so if I were to let it go, I'm going to get that energy back out of the system. It's conserved. Let's say I do it in a different way though. Let's say I lift that ball up to 3 meters and then I drop it down. Let me show you how these are conservative. And so I'm going to show you those same values. What's the only difference in this equation? I lifted it to 3 meters, remember, to begin with. So that's going to be negative 59 joules. But then when I dropped it that last meter, that's going to be a negative 1 meter. And so I got 20 of those joules back. And so if I take 20 or negative 59 and add 20 to it, I get that same negative 39 that I had before. It doesn't matter the path by which we take. It still has the same amount of gravitational potential energy. This also applies to a mass spring oscillator. And so I've got a baseball here attached to a spring. And I'm going to push it in like that. Now is that a conservative force? 
If I let it go, am I going to get some of that energy back? For sure. And there's a different equation for that. It's 1 half kx squared. What's k? That's going to be the spring constant. We'll say that's 125 newtons per meter. What's going to be our x value? It's the displacement, how far we move it. So that's 22 centimeters, or we could say that's 0.22 meters. And so if I plug that in my equation and figure out significant digits, I've done negative 3.0 joules on that baseball. So when I let it go, we're going to get that work back. We're going to get that energy back out of the system. Now we also have conservative forces when we're looking at charges. So if I put a charge inside an electric field and move it in that direction, if I do work on it, am I going to get that energy back? For sure. And so a good example of this would be charges inside a circuit. And so if you think about it, we have positive charges on this end of the battery. And so as I move a charge like that, I'm doing work on it. And so am I going to get that energy back? Well, we have a different equation. That equation uh, or the amount of potential electric energy is going to be equal to the charge, what charge we have, times the change in voltage, change in potential. And so if it's a one Coulomb charge and we have a, a 1.5 volt battery, we're going to get negative 1.5 joules of energy just on that one charge. And so did you learn how objects in a system can store potential energy due to their position? And then finally, as long as those are conservative forces, could you quantitatively figure out how much potential energy there is in a system? I hope so, and I hope that was helpful.